everyone, this is Tamara from ShelfAddiction.com and welcome to episode 135. Tonight on Book Chat, I'm talking with young adult fantasy romance author Chantal Gaudery. She is an Amazon best-selling author who is originally from the countryside of Pennsylvania. She first started writing stories at the age of seven and continues that love of writing today. She has three published titles and one on the way. Today, Chantel is sharing her top five picks in the genre of retellings. So if you already love the retelling genre, or if you're looking to try a new book out in this genre, you'll want to stay tuned and hear the recommendations that Chantel has to share today. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like and share it. Show your support by rating this podcast and leaving a positive review on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. The podcast can also be found on the Spreaker app, the only place where you can get broadcast notifications so that you never miss a live episode. If you'd like to email in feedback or questions, feel free to reach out to me at info at shelfaddiction.com or call in and leave an internet voice message on SpeakPipe. I look forward to hearing from you. The link is below in the show notes. Hey, Chantel, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me today. Of course, of course. So like I was telling you a little bit ago, I like retellings and it's been a while since I've gotten any retellings recommendations. So that's why I thought you would be the perfect person to share with (laughs) us your top five retellings recommendations. Well, I'm really excited to share them with you. Thank you again. I mean, retellings are just, they're definitely my favorite genre. Um, I kind of grew up just reading them when I discovered um, my basically, I'll just I'll start with my number five, Beastly. Uh, not Beastly. Oh my gosh, Beauty by Robin McKinley. That was my first retelling that I ever discovered in a library when I realized like people actually write about fairy tales. So mm-hmm. that was my first introduction to the world of fairy tale retellings. Now, when you read Beauty by Robin McKinley, were you a a, a child? Like, were you in middle school, or were you kind of older? I was in, I think I want to say eighth grade. So I was 13, 14-ish. Okay. I just asked that because like randomly, I literally just read that as a full grown adult for one of my book clubs. Oh, really? And <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I I mean, I, I do think that's a, a really fun, unique retelling. But, you know, I don't know. That feminist vibe is missing that I, I like so much. I just... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess for... A young person like me when I read it it was like <laughs> wow I'm just so enthralled with the imagery and the descriptions and and the fact that someone just wrote a book about Beauty and the Beast and and that wasn't Disney so yeah. I think I'm sure when I if I were to read it as an older adult now I would probably tend to agree with you only because that's kind of what I look for now in books myself is is this character strong or is the female character strong? Does she really need to have that prince come in with a a sword and save the day or can she do it herself? Yeah, for sure. So you guys, this one is definitely, I think YA, right? It's definitely in the YA arena being that it's on the, I don't know, teen shelf, I guess. Yeah. Let's, I guess we can just tell a little really, really quick what's different about this book from the original, I guess, the Disney version of the story? Um, So Beauty actually focuses more on the original story that was either, it wasn't Grimm Brothers, I want to say it's Charles Perrault. Um, But Beauty has three, two sisters, and they're evil, or they, you know, they focus on their beauty, and Beauty doesn't focus on that at all. She focuses more on being the homebody to her father, and interesting enough the new version of the beauty and the beast film that just came out um in disney they kind of did a little nod to the original story where the father goes um to bring back stuff from the ship that because he was a ship merchant Mm -hmm. and um you know and beauty asks for a rose while her other sisters asks for you know dresses and expensive stuff and they don't get that but he bring you know and that's why the father goes to get the rose and the beast is like you know if you if you don't come back then i'm gonna get you and you're gonna die and so beauty goes in to her father for her father i can't speak tonight apparently (laughs) um but yeah, it's really similar in that sense that there's it's just a different way of beauty getting to the castle. 
Yeah. Well, you know, that movie was really popular, but ironically, I did not see it. (laughs) But I heard everyone loves it, though. I did. Yeah, I loved it. I went and saw it six times. Wow, Um, six times. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I'm a huge fan of Beating the Beast. So I I went six times. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so side note, before we jump into your number four, and I hope now you guys I have not seen her list. So hopefully this is not on her list. If it is, <laughs> sorry. Um, But did you read the most recent two of the Sarah J. Mass um, kind of interpretations of Beauty and the Beast? Well, at least the first book anyway, it was called uh, Court of Thorns and Roses, I think was the first book. Yes, I have read all three of them. And it is the first one is on my list. Oh my gosh. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I, it's okay. love it. no, it's I loved okay. it though. I really did love it. Yes, I yes, it is one of my favorite books. Um highly influential for me. I want to be an author just like her. Um and I love that she's from Pennsylvania and so am I. So I'm hoping like some of those good vibes like transfer over to me. Oh, absolutely. Okay, I'm sorry. I did not mean to rain on that parade there. But you know, okay, let's move on to number four. What's your number four slot? Um, So number four is a book called The Rose and the Beast. And it's actually a collection of short stories um, that are all fairy tale related. Um, I just remember, I I haven't read this book in, uh, oh my gosh, a long time. So I can't really tell you what I loved about it so much, but I think it was during that age where I was finding out that people were writing retellings and I just, I ate them up. I ate them up like cereal. I just wanted more and more. So Mm -hmm. that was definitely one of my favorite books that I remember carrying around with me for like a year. I would go to the library, check it out and recheck it out over and over and over again. Wow. That sounds like a good option for people who want to dip their toe into that subgenre, you know, and they haven't before. Right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So what's your number three? Number three is East by Edith Patou or Edith Patou. I always say her name wrong. Um, It's actually based on the fairy tale called East of the Sun, West of the Moon, which is also kind of what A Court of Thorns and Roses, in my opinion, is kind of based off of as well. It's Mm In the genre of Beauty and the Beast, where there is a maiden who has to, you know, she she ends up living with a bear slash beast and falls in love with him. But she can't see him during, like, during the night he turns into a human and she's not allowed to see him. And when she goes to visit her family, her mother gives her this, like, candle, this magical candle and tells her, you know, you should light the candle and see who's exactly in in your bed or in the, in the man's bed and, and she lights it and she finds him. And then he has to be taken away by this troll queen who is in love with him. And, um, I mean, that's the gist of the story, uh, fairy tale wise, the book is divided into different points of view, father, brother, the girl, the troll queen. Um, and it's just, it's beautiful. I read that when I was like a 11th grader. Mm -hmm. And I think that was when I started to feel like, oh, I really want to write a book like this someday. And I want to write a book about Alalera like this. So, (laughs) you know, I have not heard of that one. But this that sounds really interesting. So I think I might add that to my TBR. You know, that list is so long right now. It's crazy. (laughs) I'll add another one. (laughs) (laughs) Um, My number two, I would have to say is Oh, I really bounced between Ella Enchanted and really anything by Donna Jo Napoli, like Spinners, Zell, Beast, Bound. I read all of them <laughs> when I was a young person, too. Um, and Ella Enchanted is just a fun book. And I, when I was reading that book, I actually listened to a soundtrack, the Peter Pan 2003 soundtrack, the entire time I read it. So every time I listen to that soundtrack now, I just think Ella Enchanted and I think about the glass shoes and the prince and how wonderful and charming he was. And um, But I really loved Donna's fairy tales. Um, Spinners is like Rumpelstiltskin. Zell is Rapunzel. Mm-hmm. Beast is obviously Beauty and the Beast. And Bound is a Chinese 
slash Japanese. I can't remember um, which one, but it's more of a nod to a Cinderella story with a fish being like the mother spirit and wow, which is really good. Both like both were really really good. So Beast was that the one they made the movie about? Was it based off of that book or was that another one? No, that was another one. So okay. Beastly by Alex Flynn was actually my number six. I added that one just uh. as a as an added <laughs> bonus. But Beastly, yes, with by Alex Flynn is the one that we've seen with Vanessa Hudgens. Oh, okay, cool. I like it. Okay, so number one. What's your number one? A Court of Thorns and Roses, of course. Yay! It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Now, okay, so go ahead and share with us what this one is about. And then after you're done with that, I would love to know why this is your favorite. Okay, so this is about a girl named Feyre who um, is basically stolen away by a wolf or a beast and um, is taken into the Feyland. And that is where she realizes that this wolf slash beast is actually a... high lord named tamlin tamlin and um he also has a friend and i am failing at who the friend's name is but he's also really awesome and he's from a different court season um and she basically falls in love with him he falls in love with her and then he gets stolen away by this horrible fairy woman who um wants to rule the whole fey world and destroy the humans and that's when she meets the wonderful but horrible oh i God. guess at that point oh, reese yeah oh um, don't, keep going. don't no. keep going yeah taking everything in me not to fan yeah. girl over some of these characters right now it's taking everything in me so yeah <laughs> i should have just said book two was my favorite because book two really was my favorite but yeah yeah Reese. And I'll just leave it there because I know everyone has probably read this book um, and knows who Reese is. Well, if you haven't, get on it. But you know what? In my personal opinion, I, like you, think book two is my favorite. And people have been saying all over the place that number two is the best of the three. And I agree with that statement. Um, I I do, too. But definitely if number one kind of doesn't you know, just give you the warm and fuzzies, hang on and go to book two because it gets just, wow, it's mind blown, mind blown. Definitely. Yes. Okay. So why do you love this book so much? Because I can tell you all the reasons why I love it, but why do you love it? (laughs) I guess first, because it really opened my eyes to the world of new adult books. I kind of felt like, okay, I don't have to be 16 and guilty. You know, like I'm 28 and I don't have to feel guilty about going into a young adult section and stealing a book that maybe a 16 year old would read. This was really geared for young 20, 30 plus people who want to read a good book that's based on a fairy tale. Um, I really loved Sarah's imagery, her word usage just the way she characterizes everyone the character development in general like holy smokes yeah um the way she can make you feel about a character and and have them be so human and i think that is the one reason why even to this day a lot of people say like they hate tamlin they hate tamlin for i'm not going to say what but for his actions that happen later in the books and I still say that Sarah has a way of not making people, not making her characters a villain per se. They're just human and they're making human choices. And we all do. We all make really bad mistakes in our lives. And Tamlin just made a really bad mistake. And I just really liked that, that she really challenged people to look at yourself or other people around you and, and realize that they're not villains. They're just people who are struggling or making mistakes and I don't know I just I I felt lost in her world what makes the best villain and I think she did this very well is the villain that thinks they're doing the right thing the villain that knows I'm right this is the right thing and they don't even know they're the villain and that's kind of what happened to some of these characters it's kind of like well you need therapy but that's another conversation (laughs) (laughs) Yes, they do. (laughs) 
Awesome. So, okay. So we get, you gave us your top five and I think you gave some really cool ones and I encourage everyone to check them out. The links for all of them will be below in the show notes, but let's talk a little bit about retellings in general. You know, recently, um, I would say in the last few years, retellings have been really hot. Like, you know how the YA world kind of goes in phases and it seems like retellings is it like the last couple years. So you decided to write a retelling, right? I did. Um, You are absolutely right about it going into phases. I think we all experienced the vampire side and then the werewolf side and then the dystopian with the Hunger Games. And now it's really fairy tales Mm -hmm. or maybe it's kind of both at the same time because I still see a lot of dystopian books. Um, And I will be honest with you, I have had this story in my mind and in my heart since I was a little girl. And I know that probably sounds really weird if you read my book and you're like, wait, what? Um, But my dad actually bought this VHS for me when I was little. And it had this cartoon version of this story. um, Very kid-friendly. And I just loved the dresses and the prints. And I really, really wanted a book that was about that or a movie that was about that. And I could never find it. Um, so when I was in college, I tried to write my own version of it and it just wasn't the right time. And then, yeah, I, you know, I want to say like four or five years later, I spit this book out and here it is. Okay. So tell us the title because I, I think I will mess it up. So just share with us the title of this book. I will. So I, I call this my American version or the English version. Um, I call it Alalera. German people will call it like Alalera or they have that raspy, they got it going kind of accent that I just don't have. Mm-hmm. But Alalera is the way that I say it. Okay. So is this just um, now? Okay. First, tell us what this is based off of, because I am not familiar with the fairy tale this you, you know, that inspired this book. So can you tell us a little bit about what what the actual fairy tale is? That's the original, you know story yeah yeah so the brothers Grimm um they wrote this story and it's called Alalera um there is also another story called Donkey Skin which is really similar um and I think that was more of the French the French's version of the story um but the Grimm brothers is do you want me to tell you like what the fairy tale is um, yeah, I mean, overall, just a general, sen- you know, because honestly, I had not heard of this. And I do, I'm familiar with some of the, you know, Brothers Grimm fairy tales, but not all of them. So obviously, the Brothers Grimm, we know it's kind of like a dark, not really, you know, so it's not candy and roses and rainbows. It's like, kind of right. scary. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not right. familiar with this one. Okay, so Alalera is about a princess. Um, her mother dies, and right before the mother dies, she says to her husband, you can't marry anyone unless they have my golden hair, or in some versions, you can't marry anyone who isn't as beautiful as me. Um, and then the king, you know, and I think that was the way of the queen trying to say, like, don't marry anyone. But he decides to try to find someone who has her golden hair. And with all the time that is spent trying to find this bride, his daughter grows up and she has the golden hair, which obviously is a very uncomfortable situation. And he decides that he will pursue her. Mm. So the daughter says, I won't marry you unless you can make me these gifts. I want a dress made out of sunbeams, moon rays, star dust, and a coat of a thousand furs, which Alalera translate to all, um, something about all, all furs or all a thousand furs. So it and she's she's asking for these gifts, hoping that he'll never be able to fulfill them. But he does. Oh, no. So, oh. yeah. So she takes the coat and her and her gowns. She actually she actually sticks them like in walnuts. And she also in the original, she also takes like a spindle, like a little golden spindle, like the size of your thumb, um, a ring. And there's something else that she takes with her. And she runs away and gets lost in the woods, and this prince finds her. And she goes to work in his kitchens as a scullery maid. And 
there's like three balls. So, you know, what does she do? She uses the three dresses. And this whole time she's hiding in her fur coat. So he, he doesn't see her golden hair. He doesn't see what she looks like. He just sees this big fur coat girl. You know, he, he doesn't see who she really is. She uses her gowns um, for each three balls that he hosts. And then after each ball, she sticks like one of the gifts that she brings, like the golden spindle and the ring into the soup that she makes him. And he would pull it out and be like, who made the soup? And the cook is like, oh, the girl with the fur coat. Mm -hmm. So she, um, she's called over to the prince and basically reprimanded. And at the very end, he kind of catches on that it's her and he reveals her and then they marry and they live happily ever after. Aw, so, okay. I say aw, but there was one thing that was kind of gross in there. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about <laughs> your book. <laughs> okay. So your yeah. book, is your book YA or is, is it a, a, a older book because of some of the subject matter in there? So I would say that it's not exactly YA. I would call it new adult just because of the more mature scene that is in the book. Um, I would say like 17 up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like 16 is still a little like I would only want you to read it if you were comfortable with the content. But um, new new adult, definitely. Okay. And so this this scene you're talking about, um, you don't have to spoil it exactly, but we're talking about something between a father and daughter, though, right? Just so everyone knows. Yes. yes. Okay. So if that's a problem, you guys. <laughs> just beware. You've been warned. You've been warned. Don't yeah. freak out. So what made you go that route with it? I was actually just going to say, so oh. I do want to say, so um, the... The reason why I went that route is because I wanted to write something that could possibly help someone in a situation like that. I've, thank goodness, have never been in a horrible situation like that, but I knew quite a number of people who had. And I wanted my book to be a source of hope or inspiration to them that they are so much more than what has happened. And they are worth more and they are, you know, I, I, I just would want them to feel like they are strong enough to be like, just to, to over, I don't want to say overcome because then that diminishes what's happened to them, but to just be themselves that, that they are so much more than what has happened. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. It does. It does. So outside of that situation, um, is there like kind of, romance but obviously there's a romance between her and this prince um what's the heat level on on those scenes oh like a two <laughs> like okay. a two or a three yeah i wanted to keep the romance between the princess and the prince pretty pretty fluffy and soft because of because of the situation that she finds herself in and i i felt that it wouldn't be correct <laughs> or it wouldn't feel right if it was more than that mm -hmm. so obviously this is a retelling but are there some other genres that kind of touched your story like is there any fantasy or you know it's a fairy tale but you know how much do, are there like fantastical things like you know how we were talking about sarah j moss her book you know there's a lot of very different unique things in there do you have some of you know fantasy traditional fantasy things in yours or another genre that may touch it um, no, you know, I, I, I try to keep it pretty historically realistic, but I do have the magic walnuts that she sticks her dresses in, if that counts as magic. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I it do have, does. I don't know how you fit a dress in a walnut. <laughs> so her, her mother or the queen is actually like this whimsical witch or was, and it's kind of alluded to at the very, very beginning. Um, and that's where these magical walnuts have come from. Mm -hmm. And the dresses are unburnable. So Alayra or Aurelia, the princess, tries to get rid of the gowns and she can't. So that was an, a magical element that I used. But everything else is pretty just fairy tale, historical, 
pretty normal. Mm-hmm. What time does this take place in? Um, I would say 15, 1600s. I really tried to keep it more towards like the Tudor and well, like between the, the War of the Roses and the Tudor times. So 15, 14, 15, 1600s. Oh, wow. Okay, that's cool. So obviously, I think your book will probably very be very world built, you know, lots of world building and rich with details to like make you feel like you're in that time. Yeah, yes. Okay, awesome. So, okay, so we know the age range, but who do you think would enjoy your book? Like who's who's the target audience? Like people who just love retellings or would this be an awesome book to check out if you've never read a retelling in your life? I think it would be the latter. I would hope that my audience can be people who have never read a retelling and are looking for are, are looking for something like that. Um I have had a few people already say they've never read one before and they've read it and they were completely awe-inspired and wanted to read more. And I was like, here, go read some more. Here are some of my favorites. Um, But yeah, I would say I would, I would hope that my audience can be those people. Yeah. Retellings in like a lot of these unique subgenres, it's really like going down a rabbit hole. Like if you've never read it before, you just, if you like that first taste of it, you just keep going. (laughs) And before you know yeah. it, you've read like 20 of them. It's like, wow, you, you get sucked in. Yep, definitely. Awesome. So is there anything else you'd like to share about your time? I'm sorry, say it one more time for me. Alaran? Alalera. Alalera. Okay. Yep. Is there anything else you'd like to share about Alarela? Um, Other than don't let a really uncomfortable scene stop you from reading this book because at the very end, you'll understand why things had to happen the way that they did to get to the ending that is there. Like you have to get through the really hard times to get the piece of cake at the end. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you that the piece of cake at the end is totally worth it in Alalera. It's, it's a great book. The characters are, are amazing and I'm completely biased, but Prince Klaus is based off of Prince Eric from The Little Mermaid. So if you're a Prince Eric fan, you're going to love him. Oh, well, you know, when I was looking at uh, on Goodreads, some people were throwing up uh, memes of Klaus from the originals. I'm like, what? Wait, what? What's going on here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I saw that. I did. And I was like, wait, I don't get it. And then I had a look again. I'm like, oh, so now. Nah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> but um. Yeah, just just go for it. Get through the uncomfortable scene. It's literally like three or four pages. and Or you can skip it. You don't even have to read it. Um, but I would recommend it. I mean, it's really important to talk about these really hard topics. And I think it's important to acknowledge that these things do happen. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, it sounds like you addressed it with tact. And that's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> so are you writing any more fairy tale retellings right now or so it's not exactly a fairy tale retelling currently i am writing a mermaid story um and it is based off of some tumblr adventures that i had when i role played on tumblr um and there's definitely some disney slash fairy tales that are just going to be incorporated into the story but i'm not exactly retelling a tale okay so role playing on tumblr that's new to me what is that (laughs) exactly like i know what role play means and i know what tumblr is but i don't know how the two work together (laughs) i know when someone said that to me i was like what and then um so basically what you do is you make a profile of a character that you want to write as And you can actually join different writing groups. So obviously I joined a Disney group because what else am I going to do as a Disney lover but want to write as a fairy tale character? And um, you can interact with all sorts of different people, all sorts of different characters. So for for, for what I used to do, I used to write as Ariel from The Little Mermaid. And I had a heck of a time. I, I mean, just... 
a great time, I should say. I had a great time interacting with a hatter from Alice in Wonderland and a Jim, um, a Jim Hawkins from Treasure Planet and Flynn Rider from Rapunzel. And you just make stories. You just, oh. it probably sounds really silly, but it's a lot of fun. And it's a great way of meeting people who love to write. Yeah. And that also love Disney. That's yeah. kind of two for one. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> That's yeah. cool. I might actually, you know what, not that I want to write, a, you know, in a role play situation, but I might read some of it. Is it, is it easy for someone like as a reader to follow? It can be as long as the two people that are writing or if it's three or four, if they've labeled it correctly, there's a way of tagging things. Mm -hmm. So maybe like, I don't want to say like two or three years ago, I started to write as the beast, which was really interesting to write as a male that I've never written as a male before. Mm -hmm. And I would say it's probably pretty easy to read between me and the girl who wrote as Belle. Um, yeah, it just it really just depends on how they've tagged everything. Wow, that's really cool. So now you're working on a mermaid story. I am. Okay, so when is that coming out? Um, well, I have my final, like, rough draft due in December, so I want to say probably next year sometime. Okay. Um, we're also starting, I just recently got the rights back to my first novel that I published called Seven Seeds of Summer, and that will also be published through Parliament House Press. Um, we're going to be starting content edits on that in October, so that'll be out sometime next year, um, and that'll actually be changed into a series of some sort and i'm hoping the mermaid story becomes a series as well as long as i get enough content for it mm -hmm. and um i did write a sequel to the other contemporary book that i just released like two weeks ago um the first one's called the songs in our hearts and it's a high school love story and i have a sequel to that and i'm just waiting to see if it'll get signed okay so you go lot. you're working away busy yeah. bee. yes <laughs> I'm trying to do it. Yes, girl. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so um, just to, you know, piggyback around to the original book we were talking about tonight, I was looking on your blog and you have a really cool post. Check out Chantal's blog. She has a really cool post um, meshing her retelling title with lip colors. I'm like, that's so cool. <laughs> I love super makeup. Cool. <laughs> I love, love makeup. I used to work at Ulta. So I just, I love palettes and lip colors. And I was like, I totally want to write that they're a lip color. Yeah, that's so unique. I'm like, I've never seen anyone do that. And you know what? I'm like digging some of those colors. Like, yes. Yes. Very cool. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Is there anything else you'd like to share before we sign off for this evening? No, I would just like to say thank you so much for having me on your channel. And if you want to follow me, you can do so on my website. Um, it's www.chantelgadori.com. I am on my Instagram almost every single day. So you can always follow me on that or my Facebook. Awesome. So all of Chantel's links are all below in the show notes. So her website, Instagram, Twitter, all that fun stuff, you can connect with her via the links below. And you can also find her um, buy link for a couple of her books below as well. All the ones we've mentioned during this episode, you can find below as well. So definitely check her out. And it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. And take care. Yep. Bye. Thank you for tuning in and downloading today's episode. If you are enjoying the book chat episodes and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. First, you can head on over to iTunes and give a positive five-star review. You can follow me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. You can follow the Shelf Addiction podcast on Spreaker, the only place where you can listen live and get broadcast notifications so that you never miss a live episode. Most importantly, you can share the podcast with friends and family that love books and audiobooks. Thank you for listening. And until next time, happy reading.